This video is brought to you by Ultium 365 via the World Designs Electronics and Octopod, the fastest search engine for electronic parts. As usual, Seed Studios has surprised everyone by launching the smallest ESP32 C3 Wi Fi plus Bluetooth development board. Xiao means small in Chinese. Previously, they launched Seed Vino Xiao, the smallest Arduino, and this time the Xiao ESP32 C3. These are the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth modules I have been using for a long time and this is the Xiao ESP32 C3 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module. Just look at the size difference. The Seed Studios ESP32 C3 is extremely small in size. Anyway, since this is a getting started tutorial, I will try my level best to explain each and every detail including number one, technical specifications, number two, pinout. Number 3. ESP32 C3 board installation using Arduino IDE. Number 4. Writing our first program to control an LED. Number 5. I will also use it with the Adafruit I.O. for monitoring the temperature and humidity. So without any further delay, let's get started. The components and tools used in this video can be purchased from Seed Studios and Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. Here is the Seed Studios Xiao ESP32 C3 which is an IoT Internet of Things mini development board based on the Espressif ESP32 C3 Wi-Fi and Bluetooth dual mode chip. You might be wondering what is C3? Well actually ESP32 has a number of variants for example ESP32, S2, S3, C3, C5, C6 and H2. The ESP32 C3 type is a single core 32-bit RISC-V CPU up to 160 MHz. It has excellent radio frequency performance supporting IEEE 802.11 BGN Wi-Fi 2.4 GHz and Bluetooth 5 low energy protocols. The board has this IPX connector which is used to connect the Wi-Fi Bluetooth antenna to increase the signal strength for your wireless applications. This is an ultra-low power module that consumes only 43 microamps when in deep sleep mode. This board also has the battery charging chip that can be used to charge the lithium battery. It has 400 kilobyte of SRAM and 4 megabyte of onboard flash memory. For other technical specs, you can refer to the product page or you can read my article available on electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. Now let's take a look at the pinout diagram. Apart from the 5 volt ground and 3.3 volt pins, it has got a total of 11 GPIO pins. These are multi-purpose pins. All these 11 GPIO pins can be used as digital pins. GPIOs 2, 3, 4 and 5 can also be used as analog pins for interfacing analog sensors. GPIOs 6 and 7 can be used as I2C pins for connecting I2C supported sensors and display modules. GPIOs 21 and 20 can also be used as TX and RX and finally GPIOs 8, 9 and 10 can be used as the SPI pins. Now let's take a look at the onboard components. Ultium 365 lets you hold the fastest design reviews ever. Share your designs from anywhere and with anyone with a single click. It's easy. Leave a comment taking your teammate and they will instantly receive an email with a link to the design. Anyone you invite can open the design using a web browser. Using the browser interface, you are able to comment, markup, cross probe, inspect and more. Comments are attached directly to the project, making them viewable within Ultim Designer as well as through the browser interface design, share and manufacture all in the same space with nothing extra to install or configure. Connect to the platform directly from Ultium Designer without changing how you already design electronics. Ultium 365 requires no additional licenses and comes included with your subscription plan. Get real-time component insights as you design with Octopart built into Ultium 365. Octopart is the fastest search engine for electronic parts and gives you the most up-to-date part data like specs, data sheets, gate models, and how much the part costs at different amounts etc. right in the design environment. So you can focus on your designs. Links to the Ultium Designer 
Ultium 365 and Octopod are given in the description. This is the USB Type-C interface. This is the charge LED, the USB 32C3 itself, a reset button, Wi-Fi Bluetooth antenna connector and a boot button. On the bottom side, we have got JTAG pads, battery connector and a thermal pad. Now I'm going to solder mail headers so that I can easily use it on a breadboard. As you can see, I have soldered the mail headers. Now, to use the ESP32C3 with the Arduino IDE, you will need to install the latest ESP32 board manager URL link. You will need to copy this link from the article. Then open the Arduino IDE. Click on the file menu. Click on the preferences. And paste the link in the additional boards manager URLs. As you can see, I have already added the link if you already have some URLs, then simply put a comma and paste the URL. Finally, click on the OK button. This time, click on the Tools menu. Go to Board and click on the Boards Manager. Search for the ESP32 and install the latest version. As you can see, I have already installed the latest version of the ESP32 board. Now go to the boards and check if you can find the Xiao ESP32C3. If it's available in the list, then congrats, you are done with the hard part. Now I'm going to start with a simple LED project. Connect the cathode leg of the LED with the ground pin on the ESP32C3. Connect the anode leg of the LED with the digital pin 9 through a current limiting resistor of 330 ohms. I connected the LED as per the circuit diagram and now let's take a look at the programming. Here I have this very simple code. You can see LED is connected to digital pin D9. Inside the setup function, I set the LED as output. Inside the loop function, I'm simply turning on and turning off the LED. I'm using a delay of one second. Now to upload the code, select the Xiao ESP32C3. Make sure the correct communication port is selected. Finally, click on the upload button and wait for a while. You can see the code has been uploaded. The LED is blinking which means we have done everything correctly. Now in this next example, I'm going to use ESP32C3 with Adafruit I.O. for monitoring temperature and humidity using DHT11 sensor. You can run your previously designed projects without changing the code. You will only need to change the pin numbers. To practically explain this, I'm going to use my previously designed Adafruit I.O. dashboard. If you want to learn how to make the same IoT dashboard using Adafruit I.O., then I highly recommend watch my video tutorial on Adafruit I.O. and ESP8266. I will provide a link in the description. Now let's take a look at the circuit diagram. The data pin or the S pin of the DHT11 sensor is connected with the D6 pin while the voltage and ground pins of the DHT11 sensor are connected with 3.3 volt and ground pins. I connected the DHT11 sensor as per the circuit diagram. Now let's take a look at the programming. I have already explained this code in my previous video on the Adafruit I.O. and ESP8266. As this time I'm using ESP32C3, so I changed the ESP8266 Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi. And I only changed the DHT11 pin. This time I'm using digital pin D6. There was some code for the buzzer and OLED which I removed, while everything else remains exactly the same. 
you can copy this modified code from my article i will provide a link in the description upload this code the same way as we did in the ld example right now the xiao esp32 c3 and laptop both are connected to the wi-fi you can use the same wi-fi network or different wi-fi networks anyway you can see temperature and humidity values on the gauges let me apply some heat and you will see an increase in the temperature support me on patreon for more videos i hope you like today's episode like and share this video with your friends see you in next episode and thanks for watching